Good morning. Somehow I forgot all about the fact that I was supposed to broadcast today at 1 o'clock Bavaria time. It just went right through my head. So, here I am a little bit late. Sometimes it's like that. <clears throat> Hopefully nobody was too disappointed. I don't know. Let's take a look at things here. Let's see where we're at. Let's take a look at things. I think we we'll probably do some work here to start. Let's see what the brush situation is like. These favorite brushes. I don't think I will be needing this one. Mm, there might be some usefulness here, I'm not sure. Ah, that's one of my favorites. Ah, we'll see. Ah, we'll see. Ah, we'll see. clean up around here a little bit. Disorganization. Massive disorganization sitting in. It happens. It happens to all of us. That looks good to me. I think I see better when I'm doing this without glasses. I've reached that point in life where not wearing glasses for close-up work is a good idea. Let's see, is there any exciting news today? Anything thrilling happening anywhere? Let's see, let's go to Deutsche Welle. What's in store for the German government? Germany's new government wants to keep up the momentum of the country's current spirit of political optimism. Well, okay. I didn't know there was a spirit of political optimism right now, but okay. Germany's new government will face several domestic and international challenges in the new year. Still, a sense of optimism prevails. The most important issue facing Germans as 2022 begins is the same as a year ago, the COVID pandemic. Yes, that is true. This is becoming annoying. It was kind of fun when it started, but not really. And now it's just a normal. <clears throat> However, there is one key difference. Back then, the upcoming vaccination campaign still gave hope that the end would soon be in sight. But one year and well over 100 million vaccine doses later, the number of new infections in Germany is substantially higher than it was at the start of 2021. In order to get more people vaccinated, a universal vaccine mandate could soon be implemented. Yes, it could. And it would not surprise me if it was. I 
frankly, I don't know what people really do expect. You have a public health crisis. Well, the hospitals are overloaded. And people don't want to get vaxxed. That is fundamentally irresponsible. So, we'll see what happens. <clears throat> There's going to be a lot of detail work on this painting. get more people vaccinated, the universal vaccine mandate could soon be implemented. That would mean that politicians across the board would be guilty of breaking a promise which, with former Christian Democrat Chancellor Angela Merkel, her social democratic successor, all previously ruling out such a move, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Ambitious climate plans. Will the CDU move to the right? I certainly hope not. And that isn't going to do our politics any good at all. <clears throat> There's some chance that might happen. Following Merkel's footsteps, blah, 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 blah. <coughs> Churches in Germany need a change in outlook. And not many people go to church here. There's not many people are believers here. <sighs> Germany takes over the G7 presidency. Yeehaw. Yeah, you can definitely see that. There is a viewer. Hi, welcome. Say something exciting and I'll answer your questions. Even if it's not exciting, I'll probably answer. not too much news. We have a week more vacation. So there will be a lot of broadcasting. to go to Augsburg and buy a few supplies. I'm debating whether or not I should go to the cafe and hang out. I'll continue to debate that. sure yet. I'm 
think the responsible thing to do would be to stay at home, probably. I'm not keen on coming down with Omicron. I don't want to be quarantined in my house for two weeks. Fortunately, no, I couldn't just do a lot of painting because I would still have to work. I can work from home here. In fact, I can work from this very computer, which I am using currently. broadcast to you. <laughs> the weather's going to get cold again. I do have a train ticket. I've thought about going to Regensburg. The same thing applies. I'm not sure if I should really go out in this and take a risk. Okay, <clears throat> see those little outlines, doing that little detail there really makes all the difference, it makes it really pop. And remember, the best way to watch this show Something exciting. Good day. I hope all is well. Same to you. I hope all is well with you. Who is it? There. Aldi Dubs. Cool. Welcome to the stream. Have a good time. What do you want to know about Germany? Or life? Or Bavaria? Or, I don't know, any of my specialties. I know German pretty well. I know Germany pretty well. I know something about computer programming. <laughs> you should go ahead and subscribe. <laughs> How common is the name Brow there? I don't know. The name Brow. I've been here for almost 16 years. I can't remember ever meeting a person named Brow. It means brew. 
like Loewen, Löwenbräu, and actually what you probably mean is be er a mit umlaut u, <coughs> and that's pronounced Breu, Loewenbräu, like Loewenbräu beer. Where are you from anyways? discovered something. <coughs> no, I already knew that. Wait a minute. No big deal. It's my name. Glad my parents decided against naming me Lowen. Ha ha. I'm from and in Texas. Okay, yeah, there's a big German community in Texas. That's true. There's there's a large German community in Texas. A lot of a lot of Germans immigrated there. actually one of the more common places for German immigrants to go to. There's a place in Bremerhaven. There's a database with all the files of all the ship's logs of everybody who ever immigrated out of this country from about, I think it's from about, I don't know, 1700 or something? It's a long time ago. Maybe 1600? And you can go there and you can find your relative's name and you can find what ship they came on and when they left and what village or town or city they left here to go there and all of that good stuff. The Germans are master record keepers. They have all of it. And I think you might be able to do it online. I'm not sure. You'd have to look up the Bremerhaven Genealogy Center. I think if you Google it in English, it'll come up. Otherwise, just use Google Translate, and it'll come up that way. So, let's see. Today, I am working on these fantasy fact work houses, or at least right now. I do landscapes. I do these. I do some surrealistic paintings. I do some cityscapes. What else do I do? Well, pretty much anything that I find interesting. Now i got to think for a minute. What am I going to work on next? I think we'll turn this around here. We'll let that dry a wee bit. And then we'll go work on this. Alright, let's see. We need some water. i got some water. i got some red water. Some gray water. A thing that needs to be washed out. Some green water. And now this will turn into blue water, I'm sure. So what have I got? I've got bright blue ultramarine blue and some kind of indigo blue. I don't know. Let's see what this looks like. I think I like this indigo. Indigo is one of my favorite colors. Was it not Bremerhaven, Bremerhaven with an E, as you would say in English. Bremerhaven. Here, let me see, just a second. Let's see if I can do this without spilling anything. Let's see. I think it's spelled like this. Bremerhaven. I think that's where it's located at. There's a German geologic or genealogical center. It, it's up north somewhere. I used to live in Hanover. But I don't live there anymore, obviously. Oh, yeah. This will be awesome.
super contrasty. I think you should try that, but then just try German Genealogical Center. I don't know. Try one of those. See what you can find out. It's pretty much world famous. Their records are extremely accurate. So are you an artist? Is that's the obvious question to ask. No answer yet. Probably looking for wherever this mysterious genealogical center is. this color. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to start by trying that. Hmm. I have to be really careful here that I do not smear what I have already worked on. So yeah, anyways, let's see. What other exciting things can I tell you about my life here? I live in a place called Kloster Lechfeld. It's the smallest incorporated town with a mayor in Bavaria. It's about 20 miles south of Augsburg. Augsburg is a 2,000 year old city started by the Romans. There are Roman, all kinds of Roman relics and stuff there. And it's very rich. This part of Bavaria is well off. Really all of Bavaria is well off. to art if that counts. Absolutely it counts. Totally counts. If you make attempts to art, that's fine. Everybody should do that. I think everybody needs a hobby. The world would be a better place if people had a hobby. And I think art and music are two very good ones. There are lots of other ones though. This is more than a hobby and less than a full-time job. I had big plans to commercialize all the stuff that I'm working on, and then COVID hit. And that brought an end to all those plans because most of the flea markets closed and most of the art shows closed. stuff happened. Things are better now. A fair number of things open. Still got a long way to go. The thinking is, is that COVID will probably either make everyone sick and they'll get cured and then they'll have antibodies or it'll kill off a bunch of people, but at any rate, hopefully by June, this will be over. And then maybe I can put the plan into action. I work in watercolors and oil colors, and I draw a lot. also do some work in colored ink sometimes and sometimes I work with colored markers
and I'm learning to do Japanese style woodblock prints. Although I haven't really shown much of that on this stream here. There's a guy from Japan named David Bull, a Canadian dude who immigrated there years ago, decades ago. And he runs a Twitch stream where he carves and he prints stuff all the time. He runs it uh, three days a week. Yeah, he runs it on, it's like 8 a.m. Tokyo time. And it runs on Monday morning, Thursday morning, and Saturday morning. That's really cool. Draw as well. Well, drawing is the basis for everything. If you can't draw, painting is a lot more difficult. Of course, if you're doing abstract art, well, then the rules are all different. But yeah, drawing is everything. And really what you should do is you should learn perspective. You should learn the basics of the human form, even if you're not going to draw a lot of humans. And if you know those two things, and you know basic shapes, and you spend some time practicing, then you should be able to draw. And once you learn how to draw, learning how to paint is once again, it's an acquired skill be a real artist yeah you need some inspiration but mostly like most artists you need to work at it for a long time I studied art and architecture and design at the Virginia Tech School of Architecture for quite a few years I never graduated but it was not considered to be some talent that you had it was something that you developed and it was a way of thinking and I hold true to that to this day. And actually that's, you know, go look at Bob Ross's stuff. He's super popular here. He's going to be on television from now until the end of the German Empire. Whatever that is. And she says anybody can do it. But mostly it's a matter of just acquiring the, the techniques, the skills to do it and then just practicing and being willing to make mistakes and throw stuff away and okay I didn't like that let's try this again I got a good example of that let will dig that out here in a minute I got a real good example of that let me finish this detail okay this needs to sit for a minute anyways don't go anywhere let me show you something. This and then there's this. Bob Ross is streaming now to 2,300 people. He'll be around until the heat death of the universe with any luck. Yeah, he probably will be. I would expect that. Okay, so I just finished this a couple of days ago. This is the train station at Vanica Roda. Okay. Um, let me get my paints out of the way. I'll have a little, a little art pep talk as it was, or as it were. So anyways, so this is the painting that I just finished. Let me see if I can make it. Okay. That's in Venega Road, Germany. However, when I started this, okay, I did this all freehand. This is the one that I started with. And I realized that the perspective here was wrong, which it is. This is too angled. This roof is slanted back this way. This isn't right. This is smaller here at the base than it is at the top. This is okay, but these wheels are not right. They're foreshortened badly. So I just had to say, hey, this is no good. And so I redrew it. And I can always paint on the back of that piece that I took out. Anyways, the point being is uh, 
don't be afraid to make mistakes. That's how you learn, you know? So anyways, that's, that's the train station I just finished. And as I said, everything starts with a good drawing. So this, you can see this. This is going to be Prague Castle from the Charles River Bridge. Uh, let me see if I can get some, ah, there we go, focus, autofocus. Here, let me minimize this so you can see better. So anyways, this is Prague Castle. This is the cathedral up there that's going to be in there. This is the a lot of the government offices that are in the castle. This is another church up there. This is looking across the river. This will all be blue down here. It's actually standing on the bridge looking over it. And this drawing so far has taken me at least four or five hours, maybe more. And it'll probably take another four or five hours before it's done. But if you do the drawing well, then the painting is easy. Um, if you don't do the drawing well, then it's a problem. This one I worked on, if you can, might be able to go back and find this either here on Twitch, or if not, I put all these up on YouTube. This is uh, Fusen. It's about half finished. It's a street in Fusen. And it's going to be watercolor there. And again, I spent a lot of time working on the drawing to get the drawing halfway decent. I'm having some issues with something's weird here with the paper. I don't know what the deal is with this paper. It's supposed to be Sanders Waterford 200 pound paper, but the, the, the paint is behaving very strangely on it. So I'm decided what's going on there. So yeah, that's, that's my recommendation. It's just practice, man. I've been doing this now. I had my first art lesson when I was, how old was I? Seven years old in Key West, Florida, at some famous art gallery. See, we're working on this. This is probably safe enough to go back to now. And I've been doing this on and off for 53 years. I'm 60 years old. I did it full-time in architecture school for a long time. A lot of drawing. It was mostly buildings and stuff, but it's drawing. And then when I came here to Europe 15 years ago, I got decided, well, I always wanted to be an artist in Europe, and so I came here to be an artist, and a lot of other things, but I came here, and this is where I am, and this is what I'm doing. So I spend all my free time doing artwork. <coughs> here, I'll show you. I'll just wait a second. I'll show you what this is probably just sort of going to generally look like. Some, here are some of the earlier Fachwerkhäuser, half-timbered buildings. These are kind of like a fantasy thing. This one I did this week. This one, this one I did a couple months ago. This one's a year old. So I just keep doing them. I keep working, I've got a theme, and I work on that theme. Like I said, I do these, I do something called sea beasties, and I do landscapes. And it's mostly just a question of sitting down and working on it 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 and working on it. And then I work on it some more. I don't have anything else to do. Eh. I go to work, I run, I run a small startup business here in Bavaria that I just fell into by accident. I got hired last year. And in my free time I paint and I travel. And draw. And I do a fair amount of traveling. I've traveled all over Holland. And I've traveled all over, well not all over, I've traveled a lot around Germany. And I go to Prague when I can. I wanted to go to Prague this week, but given the situation with the virus, 
probably won't go. Generally, the abstract out of habit. I like hearing the different things that other people see that I hadn't included intentionally. Well, that's cool. If you like abstract art, go for it. I'm thinking about doing some of that. I got some canvases over here that I bought at the local store down the road. I haven't really done anything with that. There's a huge market for abstract art compared to this. The market for, for real landscapes and stuff like what I do is tiny compared to the market for abstract art. So if you're interested in selling it, <coughs> there's always a way to sell it if it's abstract art. Me, I always like doing landscapes and stuff. Hmm. Yeah, that's dry enough. We can put our hand on it now. So yeah, I'm thinking about trying some of that. Also, like I said, I do oil colors or oil painting, drawing. I'm willing to try my hand at pretty much anything, whatever the mood strikes me. And yeah, we would all love to sell something that we created. It's, a lot of that is just luck. Well, not completely. I mean, some of it is marketing. Some of it is just being persistent. Like I know if I take these paintings to um, a crafts fair here or some kind of market or flea market, they have town markets here all over, all over Europe all the time. I know I can sell this stuff. I've done it. Will I get the kind of money I want for it? That's a different question. Like if I put 20 hours in this painting, then I'd want 600 euros for it because my time is worth 30 euros an hour. Will somebody pay me 600 for it? Well, maybe the right person will. I don't know. It's really, that's, that's the weird thing about art and music. I was a professional musician in the United States for a long time. And there's just, it's really hard to tell, you know? There's a video going around on YouTube of Joshua Bell playing violin in the subway. And he made $37 in a couple hours. And he's one of the world's greatest violinists and he's playing a million dollar violin. And most people just ignored him. So there you have it. Yeah, so I'm out. I need to do something with these. I don't know what, but I need to do something with them. What is a good complementary color to green? I think this claret would work quite nicely. Let's find out. Ah! I do have some acrylic paints here, but I don't use them very often. I use them for things like painting tables when I'm bored. I generally either work in watercolor or oil. But acrylics do have a lot of advantages. They dry quickly. That can be both an advantage and a disadvantage. One of the nice things about oils, the oils dry slowly, which is a huge advantage for a beginner because you can change things. Oh, I don't like that? Easy. Wipe it off and start all over again. You can't do that with acrylic. You can't do that with watercolor. Watercolor, as soon as you touch that brush to this paper, you're committed. There is no going back. You should subscribe to the stream. When I get 50, I'll be an affiliate, whatever that means. I have no idea. I feel like some of these things need an outline. I'm not quite sure what yet. 
I like a lot of bright, vivid colors. Deep color saturation. I like that when I was doing photography. Hmm, I'm gonna have to add some more water here. And theoretically, I stream on Saturdays and Sundays at 1 o'clock, except when I forget. And Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6, when I'm here. But sometimes I'm not here. Because I'm doing something else. And it's painting, drawing, and painting. And might be some woodblock printing here shortly. I think it's, I think I need to do some of the black. I'm feeling a need to get some, some darks into this painting. That's one of the things I can tell you that, that you really can do to improve your paintings. You need to use the full color range from white to black. Until you hit affiliate, people can only follow once they can subscribe. If brought in one month, you'll get some amount of that and the option to run ads when someone joins the team. I'll help you get that a little bit closer and give you a follow. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I don't know. David Bull doesn't take any money for his stream. I'm not really sure that, that selling my streaming is what I'm going to do. I'd rather just sell my paintings and have people show up and enjoy watching me paint. And then I can pontificate on various things in life. Like what the local German news is saying. Or I don't know, whatever. I don't know. I guess I'd take it. I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, this needs the blacks. It really does. This is actually fairly close to being done, but it needs the blacks. This needs to dry before I do any blacks. Well, let's see, what can we do next? I need to work on here. Um, let's just jump in and do something completely different. This is one of my fantasy castle paintings. Let's lay in some color for this. I use a different palette. This is some Russian watercolor paint called White Knights, which I like very much. It's a lot like um, an inexpensive version of Old Holland. And this is more of the traditional standard landscape palette. And like I said, I've said I need to clean this up. Alright, now, when starting a painting, we need a big brush. So what do I use for big brushes? I have these big brushes that are generally the big brushes that I fall back on. I also use these. This is some kind of Kolonsky Sable. 
This is a pure squirrel mop for wide areas of color. And these three are Cosmotop Spins, my favorite brush. So, let's see now. Now here, it will probably help Start off with a little bit of water on the brush or on the paper. Uh, thank God I, oh, I took a big chance there. I almost ruined this painting right from the beginning. Apparently, this brush was not clean. This is watercolor. It's on 100% cotton paper. Actually, we'll just keep going with this. This is going good. This is, what is this? This is Hanamula. This is a German cotton paper. Which is actually quite nice. Hanamula and Sanders and Waterford are my two go-tos. If you're going to paint watercolors, Get yourself some proper paper. Do not waste any time painting on wood pulp paper. Get 100% cotton. It's not that much. It's it's expensive, but the results are so much better than, than painting on anything else. You'll never, ever go back. Get the right paper. I just can't even begin to explain how much of a difference that makes. And this is weird because this is a cerulean blue and there's also a cerulean blue in in the fantasy set of colors that I was using. But this cerulean blue is pigment based and that one is chemically based and they don't react on the paper the same way. Yeah, I do these just for fun. I started doing these years ago just as a, again, something to do. Most of the landscapes I do are based on real places and things that I've seen, but these are not. These are just for fun. All right. So we have that. Now, what do we need next? Well, we need to clean this brush so we don't do that again. That was very dangerous. I'm running it through my hands, and then I can see if there's still any color coming off of it. And I do have some rags over here. for a second. Okay, usually what I do with the land, okay, you're working on watercolor. You want to build up from the lights to the darks. This is going to be greenish. This is also going to be greenish. It's going to be a meadow. All of this, except for the castle up here, is going to be brown. Ah, that's the problem with what I did there. I sprayed water here and so it goes everywhere and then the pencil lines don't stop the water from moving around. So what I need is a yellow orca color which I have right here. I don't want to put this on real heavy I just want to get some general tint in here. And 
yeah, my yellow ochre is a little bit polluted, and I don't care. Because, like I said, this is this is not the color you're really going to see in the painting. This is just like toning down the canvas in in oil painting. I'm basically doing the same idea here. It's just similar to what you see in oil painting, where somebody paints something in oils in black and white, or in blue and brown, or gray, or something, and it's like a it's called the underpainting. And you can do that here in watercolors as well. And to some degree, that is exactly what I'm doing here. Bob Ross does it too. He tones his canvases before he paints them. And he starts with a base coat. He's working wet on wet, so he's got some, some either some clear coat or he's working with a white or sometimes with sometimes he paints up his canvases black. Really like all of the painting techniques for doing oil colors, you more or less end up seeing him in Bob Ross videos. He's just not saying this is the classic method of doing blah, blah, blah. He's modified all of it to suit his purpose. And his purpose is quick painting in oils. So yeah, we're just we're just laying down some some basic color here. This is not like I said the final color. This is just toning the paper. See, we can build some stuff up here. We can work pretty rapidly. Said, get them off. You'll love it. It's all right. Yeah, I think this idea about live streaming art is actually pretty cool. There's some guys I watch on YouTube. Andrew Tischler from New Zealand. Dave Bull's videos on printing. Um, there's, a, there's an abstract artist from England that I actually enjoy watching sometimes. He's got some really good ideas about how to build a business in art. And he says it's just building a business. It's not really very... It doesn't really have very much to do with your art. It has everything to do with building a business, which is true. You know, a large part of why some people are successful, probably most artists, is their marketing. And it's not that their art is particularly something, well, it's unique, but then everybody's art is unique. So, you know, what is it that makes somebody worth a lot of money and somebody not? Why is David Hockney the highest paid artist right now in the world. Why is his art so valuable? 
I mean, when you compare that stuff to like Monet and 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 Van Gogh, David Hockney to me just is nothing. But people love it, and a lot of that is is marketing. And a lot of that is having something that fits the right place at the right time. I don't know. It's like people used to say when I was in the music business. Chris, it's the music business. With the emphasis on the business, not on the music. And I do think there's a lot of truth to that. Alright, so we got that laid in. <laughs> I feel the same about Warhol, freaking soup cans. Well, <clears throat> here's the thing. Andy Warhol was an absolutely brilliant marketer. I think I'm going to go try another brush and, and decide what I think about this. He was, he was a brilliant marketer. And it's like he had these file parties. And yeah, it was it was all marketing, man. I mean, you know. If he'd done that stuff and stayed at home and been, oh look, I painted some soup cans, people would have looked at him and said, You're crazy. But because he developed this personality. I'm like, oh wow, Andy Warhol painted some soup cans. Look at this, it's totally cool. And, you know, that's that's just life, man. That's that's how it works. So I'd say it's every bit as much about marketing as it is about being good at it. I'm not even sure what good really is. I mean, I see things in my head that I can't paint. I think, oh, I'm terrible. And then I talk to artists who are really famous, and they oh, that's funny. I have the exact same experience. So I don't think that an artist should waste their time judging their own work. I think that you should leave the judgments to somebody else, and you should just create it. If you like, if you create it, and you're not completely unhappy with it, and somebody else likes it, then keep creating it. here. I don't think you can see what I'm doing down here at the bottom. This is the problem kind of with this setup right now. And I have to be real careful here because I have really limited amount of space. that later. Okay. So the basics are in. Now we can ramp it up a little. to chat. Okay, I have allowed will it post. I don't know what happened. There was some message here and then somebody disappeared.
Yeah. Okay, whatever that was, that was weird. Yeah, I'm a lefty. You say left-handed people are more creative than right-handed people. I don't know if that's true either. See, now this paper is already damp. So that makes it very easy to wash in some stuff here. While it's still slightly damp. I think a word I used as being filtered, probably the L word. I couldn't care less. Generally speaking, you're allowed to use whatever words you want here as long as it's within reason. If Sammy Graviano comes on and starts swearing, I don't know, maybe I'll have to cut him off just for the swear words, but I don't know, maybe I'd let him stick around. reaching a point where I'm going to have to sit back and think about this for a while. It does need to dry some. exactly what I planned on working on today, but I didn't really have a plan today. Today was more just to sit down. Oh, I'm several hours late. Let's get at it. Now, see, that's got so much water on it, it needs to dry a bit. Bavaria, man, or Germany as a whole. Sorry, I run out of things to talk about. That's why you have to interact with me. It's far more interesting when you interact. Occasionally, I do read the German news here, although it's really pretty boring today. There's very little going on. Probably get real exciting here in, in, in a few weeks, but right now it's pretty boring. questions. Oh well. Let's see what else can I tell you? I live about 10 miles north of a place called Landsberg. 
It's got 80% of the original town wall from the Middle Ages is still there. The old town is basically all preserved. It looks like it did 500 years ago. It's a really quite a cool town, very picturesque. I need to do some paintings of that place. <coughs> It's also the place where Adolf Hitler wrote Mein Kampf in prison. And the prison is still there. You can go see it from the outside. <laughs> you can see it from the inside if you want to cause trouble. Ah. This needs a bit of a hard line here. Snow helps quell Colorado fire. Well, the Colorado fire made it in the German news. France relaxes COVID rules, shortens isolation time. Endemic, epidemic, pandemic, what's the difference? Many seek refugee protections after reaching Germany. Most asylum applications made in Germany come from people other EU countries failed to register. Yeah, we're the great immigration center of Europe today. Everybody wants to come here. says that I blame them. Life here is pretty good. <clears throat> I'm thinking, where do I go next with this? I think I'm going to throw in a little bit of Three like objects here and then I'm gonna have to let this sit because this paper is just utterly saturated it's just out of control saturated I didn't really want to do that
that's got to set. It's way too wet. That paper has become saturated with water. MEP suggests BioNTech pair appear on Euronotes, the two people who invented the BioNTech vaccine here. Oh, that's a cool idea. They're going to change the way our currency looks. Let's see. Let's go back and work on this one. We're in position. I think we can do something with this now. And to do that, I'm going to turn it upwards. Now, there's a big choice here. I can either do the detailing with a brush, or I can do the detailing with a pen. I'll compromise. I'll start on something that I can do with a brush, and then maybe later on I'll switch to a pen. one little coat. I don't like the way the detailing is working with a brush, so I may switch to a pen. That's what I wanted. Using the right brush does make a difference. As we've proven to ourselves many times through experimentation and failure. Three. Starting to get dark out. Dutch police shut down illegal rave. Hundreds of people attended the rave, including people from as far away as Italy. Crazy. Airline ejects Russian and Czech hockey teams. Fellow passengers said members of the Russian junior team had been smoking on the plane and refused to wear face masks. Uh-huh. That is a serious no-go. All right. I'm still thinking about this situation here. Man, I could do this with pen and it would be so easy. kind of feel like that's cheating. You 
know what they said in the army? You ain't cheating, you ain't trying. I hate to become codependent. But I'm going to use a marker here. Just so much easier than painting it. What can I say? I can't really see that too well. Focus, come on, autofocus, you stupid camera. I'm supposed to live in the age of intelligent technology here. What's going on? Well, let's see. There we go. Obviously, we're not there yet. do it with a marker. Why would you do it with a brush? I don't know. Doing it like that is so simple. Reminds me of a line from a show, I forget which, when they when will they invent button technology that detect urgency? I see. I don't know, I haven't seen that show. We get some American television here. If you pay money you can get a lot more American television. Since I'm not a big fan of television, I don't pay them the money. Cable here is exactly like cable every place else. There's 200 some channels and most of them are terrible. I honestly think in the long run, this idea with like Twitch and YouTube live streaming I think this is probably the future of the way things are going to go for a lot of it. If, if people had good television shows on, they would watch them. But so much of television today is just bleh. This is the new method for doing these drawings, or paintings, or whatever they are. This is just so much easier than trying to paint it.
I'm going to need to go back to the store and buy a bunch of these markers. I was looking for the Albert Durer markers from Faber Castell, but I couldn't find them. Maybe I'll have to order them online. Gerstacker. Gerstacker and Bosner are two big art supply places here in Europe. And almost all the supplies are rather different from what you get in the United States. Because importing anything from the United States is just terribly expensive. So getting things like, what is that, M. Graham paints or the other fancy, really well handmade paints, you can buy them here, but they cost like a hundred milliliter tube is like 60 or 70 euros. It's just unbelievably expensive. You're better off buying Old Holland, which is considered the world's premier brand in a lot of ways. Yeah, I like that. I like that with the marker. Couldn't agree more with the current assessment TV programming. That's why I stick to YouTube, Twitch, and Netflix. Cool. I don't blame you. Netflix here is kind of lame. I tried it a couple of years ago, and the selection was not great, so I canceled my subscription. But maybe I'll re-up re it sometime. A lot of it has to do with licensing. A lot of shows they're not licensed. They're not licensed to sell overseas. It's weird, like with reruns and stuff. They're licensed for each individual country. So some rerun television show from America or England may be cheap over in America or England, but it's expensive here, depending on what it is. Yeah, I like that. I like that with that pen. That pen, that pen makes life really easy. This is a huge cheat, but what the heck? I'll have to look into those Albert Durer watercolor markers. That would be sort of a nice compromise. This is a kind of Indian ink in here. What is this? This is a Faber Castell Pitt Artist Pen Fine Liner. Kunstlertuche. Wasserfest, Hochste Lichtbestätigkeit, Indian ink, waterproof, maximum light fatness, acid free. Oh, that's cool. It's a serious art marker. I got these when I was up in Ulm last week. I'm considering making a trip to Regensburg. Oh, I like that. I, I do like this. For this work, this is perfect. Netflix and VPN, and you can watch just about everything on their catalog. Ah, yes, yes, there is that. I keep forgetting. Get the VPN and do whatever you want. truth is I'm just not a big TV watcher. It's like there was a guy who was desperately trying to get me to play video games here on Discord I guess it was. He wanted to do a sword fighting game on Discord. And 
the truth is I just didn't have any interest. I did some sword fighting here in Germany when I first came here for the first five or six years. I learned how to do serious broadsword fighting. Because I hung out at the Middle Ages festivals, so that was something to do. But there's absolutely, it, it's completely different actually carrying around a five kilogram broadsword and fighting with it and doing it in a video game. Why would I want to do it in a video game? That I don't understand. <clears throat> you know what? I think I can just move this out of the way somewhere and move this over and now you can see what I'm working on here. I usually watch TV like after I've done a bunch of art and I'm burnt or when I come home from work and I'm burnt. But I've been replacing a lot of the TV with watching various things on YouTube. There's all these videos I want to watch about how to draw, how to paint, how to do certain kinds of programming. And it's like there's a limited amount of time in life. It's like, do I really want to sit here and watch a television show? Sometimes I do, but mostly no, I don't. See, now those things really stand out. Nothing like the tactic field of a blade on impact. Huh? Tactile field of a blade on impact. That is true. I mean, the real point about that is that there's just... You can't even compare the two things. Doing a video game and actually doing it for real, there, there's just no comparison. Sword fighting believe it or not, or various types of fencing are a pretty popular sport here, for obvious reasons. People have been doing that stuff here for thousands of years. It's highly physically active. You need to have a fairly strong upper body. Playing a video game is just, there's, there's not even the same thing. I haven't done any sword fighting lately and I doubt that I will do a lot of sword fighting in the future. As much as I feel like a cheat for using a marker, this is much closer to the way I would like these things to look. <coughs> you have to be careful sword fighting. You can get really badly hurt doing that. 
I have seen some severe injuries. this house to do, we got this house to do, we got the roofs to do, and this baby's done. This is one of the quickest paintings I've done in a long time. I did a good drawing. The concept was very clear in my head when I started. And so it's going to be finished quickly. Maybe we can finish it today. These days I mostly do bicycle riding. This is one of the most awesome places in the world to ride a bicycle. In the spring, summer, and early fall I ride my bike to and from work every day and I love it. There is a bicycle road that runs from here down to Calfrin, the next town. And so I don't even have to deal with traffic here. I love cycling in Europe. I've cycled all over Holland. All over northern Germany. And now all over Bavaria. I want to do a bicycle trip from Prague back here to where I live. I think it'll take me about a week. Yesterday, at one point, we had two viewers. I was really hoping for a third one. Cycling is more my thing these days. Okay. This is almost finished.
I think we'll try to finish this today in this stream. It would be another painting finished. got all the details in except for these roofs. Now, you need to make a little signature cartouche that I do. that little there's a little splotch here we'll fix that actually maybe I won't finish it because I still need to do some work down here I don't know we'll see we'll be close we'll definitely be close I hope that you don't mind, but I shared a link with the stream with a small group of friends. Great. It's not a problem at all. The more the merrier. Mainly, I want to do this for publicity. So that someday, when, when I can haul all my stuff around to various fairs and stuff... And then people go, oh yeah, he's got a he's got a Twitch channel and he's got a YouTube channel and yeah, he's on Instagram. And it's like I said, I had a plan before the crisis. This is right on something called the Romantic Road. The Romantic Strasse. Okay, that can dry up a little bit. We're going to do a little test here. I don't want to waste my time doing real cobblestones. That would take hours and hours and hours. I might do that somewhere on a, on a real landscape, but I'm not going to do that here. But I want the effect of cobblestones. Yeah, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with people sharing these links. I'm here. I have a page on Facebook, Art by Christopher Ream. I have an Instagram account, Art by Christopher Ream. By all means, share them around. And I have a website, which, strangely enough, is called Art by Christopher Ream. You can see all my paintings there. Well, you can see most of them.
see this is where I need a young apprentice and then I can work like the old masters hey young apprentice come over here and stipple a bunch of paint on this thing yes master but unfortunately there are no young apprentices today not in the Christopher Ream studio I know they aren't modeled after them, but the buildings remind me of the painted ladies in San Francisco. Oh, that's cool. This kind of thing is really common here. If um, if you pull up pictures of the old Stadt, Altstadt, in any German city, you, you will see tons of buildings like this. I mean, they're, they're everywhere. This and this particular house, this red one and this bluish one, and actually the green one are all based on things that I saw last Monday in all. And you usually have to go to the cities that are like like secondary cities. The, the really big cities here were so badly bombed all of this stuff was destroyed. So if you go to Berlin, there aren't any fact workhouses there that I can remember. There might be some somewhere, but there aren't very many. Or Munich. Most of them are gone. There is an old town in Munich, but a lot of it's rebuilt after the war. And they had a different construction style there, mostly. Augsburg has some. Ulm has a lot. Landsberg has a lot. It's, it's like you got to go to the smaller cities that just weren't bombed as much. The big cities that were bombed are just nah. Like Hanover had an old town, but it was all they 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 bought buildings from other places and brought them in after the war because basically everything in the real old town was destroyed in a huge firestorm. Which is really too bad because Hanover had, I've seen pictures of Hanover before the war and the old town there was just spectacular. But Hanover was 90% destroyed during the war. They bombed it to oblivion. There was nothing left of the place. They launched 20 or 30 bombing raids and by the end of the war it was just completely destroyed. There are some old town, there are some houses in Linden on the south side of the river. There's one that's from like 1400 or something that's kind of cool. But most of them did not survive the firestorm. Braunschweig, they're rebuilding the entire old town. They have the original blueprints and they're rebuilding the entire old town to the original blueprints. They've been working on it for 65 years and they expect it to take another 50 before it's finished. You can train there, you can get an apprenticeship being a middle ages carpenter and be guaranteed work for the, your entire life. started with this we'll just keep going with it and we may finish this today what time is this? five o'clock that would not be too bad then what would I have in this painting I have two maybe three hours today maybe two hours yesterday and maybe an hour maybe two hours to draw so ten hours all right that's not so bad okay that's done now, what I need now, something a little wider, that's really tiny, we don't want that, easier than trying to control a brush it's not even funny we will not be doing any more brush work when it comes to this kind of a detail cool that's done turn it over and do these roofs 
And we'll have a painting here shortly. The medieval cities were, were really quite colorful. that matter, the entire Middle Ages was colorful. Like colorful clothing, colorful buildings. This has definitely become a grayer world. Yeah, I'm probably working off the off the picture here. And I think actually those houses in San Francisco were sort of modeled on what's happening here. I think I want a three. I think that the point three works better. The point one is just too small. back in America, I don't have it anymore, about what houses looked like 100 to 150 years ago. And people really put a lot of effort in the United States into painting their houses really beautifully with all kinds of, you know, complementary colors and trim that complemented itself in like seven or eight different layers. And then all of that disappeared when these dumbass Levittown houses started. If you look at the way Victorian houses were really painted 125, 130 years ago, they were gorgeous. And like I said, they still, this is actually what backwork house buildings look like around here. That's something I don't like about modern clothing. It's also incredibly boring. I have a bunch of clothing for the Middle Ages festivals here. And I gotta say, the Middle Ages clothing is both more comfortable than modern clothing, more practical for the weather, and it just, it's a lot more fun to look at. And yeah, okay, it, it, it's 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 expensive. I mean, it's not like the cheapest stuff that you buy at the cheapest stores, but it's not any more expensive than fairly good clothing is today. There are several big companies here in Europe that make Middle Ages clothing because there's a huge demand for it for Middle Ages festivals and town festivals and all kinds of things. I'd say most most people in Germany and Central Europe have at least one Middle Ages outfit in the closet at home. I 
Man, I should do that sometime. I should wear, wear I have this beautiful tunic. It cost me a couple hundred euros for the material. And it's got gold leaf thread in it. I should wear that on the stream one day. It's stunningly beautiful. And you see that stuff, you'll never want to go back to wearing off the shelf crap from the modern era. Not in a million years. We've come this far, we're just going to go ahead and finish this. There isn't much left to do. I have a really bad habit of starting paintings and not finishing them. I think this tool has become my new best friend. We're doing the detail work, the outlining things, where i got to outline things in black. Trying to do that with a paintbrush is just ridiculous. This is much faster. It looks better. It's easier to control. And I'm becoming a lazy old man. But I will look into those Albert Durer watermarkers. Then I can say it's all watercolor. I think you can get Faber-Castell supplies in the United States. They're pretty good. What's the other one? I use Kohenor a lot. Those are from Czechia. They're a famous Czech brand. And then there's Pelican. That's from Hanover, where I came from. They have a big factory store there that's quite nice. I'm still pondering my method of attack with these big gray roofs here. I'm considering using a slightly larger marker. I 
and we'll be done with this in about 15 minutes. Great! See, this is just so much faster than a brush. Okay, we're going to do something here. We're going to try a slightly bigger marker because these are bigger roofs. And then we're almost done here.
Okay, we're almost done here. You know, all the roofs here, every last one of the roofs here, except for modern buildings, is tile. Even the modern buildings, most of them are tile roofs. There are exceptions, obviously. But not a lot. The next building will go much quicker. It's not as big. That's the first thing you notice flying into Europe. All the houses have tile roofs. Which are actually very practical. A good tile roof will last 75 years. At least. Maybe longer. A little maintenance. Hold on, I need to drink water. Ten seconds before we return. Yeah, I feel better. Cool. <clears throat> Let's finish this baby up. Almost there. Okay, that's one roof done. We got one more roof to do. And this baby is finished. I need to go. It's been nice meeting you. Picture looks great. Thanks. Have a good evening. See you later. Have a nice day. This will be posted. You can come back and I'll post this. 
on YouTube and actually it'll be on Twitch for two weeks and you can come back and see what this looks like at the end. It's about 10 minutes away from being done. Thanks for stopping by. We're going to do this the right way this time. And that is that we draw the lines all the way across before we start doing anything else. This speeds up the working time incredibly. And for these, which are supposed to be something fairly easy to sell to tourists, if they're not supposed to be super fine art. And let me have a following. I think this method is perfect. Thanks for the best of luck for hitting affiliate. That would be cool. Mostly I just like to have people see my work. That's what I'm really looking for. I have a house, or well, an apartment, full of this stuff. And it's not going to do any good sitting here. I want it to go find homes. do a big painting like this in less than 10 hours, that's a good deal. The landscapes take 20. Okay. Going this direction.
One more note, one of the third floor windows on the other building was missing lines on the shutter or they were really light. You are correct. Thank you. Danke. It's easy to miss little details like that. There is no question. Okay, let's turn this around and take a look at what we got. That is a finished painting. Back work, City House number one. Ta da! Let's take off the tape. And then we're going to take a break and get a snack because I'm hungry. Let's see what this baby looks like. finish one of these things that quickly. This only took two days. That was fast. It's a very, very fast painting. the top. It's kind of like unwrapping a Christmas present. Cool. So, here we have it. That is one of the bigger fact warehouse paintings and one of the more detailed and the first one in a city. And I like it. So, thanks for tuning in. This will be on Twitch for two weeks, and then later on it will be on YouTube. I'm going to take a break. Have a nice evening. Thanks for stopping by. Tell your friends to come. They're more than welcome to come hang out. See you later. Bye.